Now that we've finished all of our walls, we're going to put our doors and windows in. Now, I'm going to start with the internal doors just to explain um, how they work and the differences, uh, as the last video might have been a little bit confusing to some people. So let's have a look at those internal doors first. And the first one that we're going to do is actually not really a door at all, but an empty opening. So sometimes, if we need to have a bulkhead above, we'll still draw the wall but we'll then cut into the wall with the bulkhead. Now again, my preference with doing a lot of things like doors or objects is to place them and then stretch it later rather than trying to um, spend too long doing maths to figure out how big that cut needs to be. So what we're seeing here is that effectively I'm taking out the entire wall. So you might ask, why did I put it in in the first place? The answer is because this rectangular door opening is only 2100 high, which means while it's not really visible what I'm doing on the floor plan, in 3D or in section, there will be part of the wall above this height going up to the ceiling. So it is important, uh, it's just not really visible at the moment, and then it will become more visible and obvious once I start to do more drawings later on. So Again, ArchiCAD is only as good as your ability to understand what it's supposed to show you or what it's supposed to create. So having an understanding of the architectural implications is very, very important. We're going to use sliding doors to do the, um, the bedroom um, wardrobe doors. Now, there, there is, I think, objects that will do this as well, but we want to keep it really simple. I'm going to extend this slightly because I'm uh, projecting this on the screen. It's made my screen very small, which is making it a little bit tricky. We're going to go and use the one, the simplest one called sliding door 21. And this gives us the ability to have either two doors that are sliding or more. Now, how do I choose whether it should be two or more doors? I'm going to extend this to its full width again, just like with that empty opening. And that's going to tell me that the total width of this door is 1910. What does that mean? We divide that by two, and it means that each of the door is bigger than a standard door. Now, I could potentially get a door that's that size, uh, but it might be a little bit more expensive, and it might be impractical for use. So rather than having just a two-panel door, I'm going to change that to three panels. Now when I do three panels, I can do it in different ways. Uh, now this isn't necessarily a wardrobe configuration, but I'm going to use this option here for now, and it's really just a representation to be honest at the moment. I'm going to use three leaves, two sliding, which means it stacks. Now the problem with this, as soon as I do that, it's going to automatically adjust and reconfigure. So I'm going to readjust that so it's a bit narrower or uh, back to the, the right size and that's going to be fine for now and now there's a lot of other things that are realistically wrong with this door but in terms of at this stage for DA drawings or CC drawings even um, as long as it's not for construction I don't need to get this perfect and I can adjust it later when I need to. Let's pick up that setting now rather than having to redo it and then I will use this again over the other side. Now I'm cutting this into the concrete block wall which may seem a bit odd uh, but this concrete block wall is running all the way through so it's acting as a structural load bearing wall to reduce the span of my floor or roof above. That's its function. So that's the sliding doors. Now of course we could use that one more time in the other bedroom. Place. Again, I'm really not precise when I place. Let's just turn that off for a second, um, trace reference. And then if I need to adjust the size of it to fit the room width, I can do that. We can see that that's a little bit awkward. So it means that the, the, the width or the placement that I did of my original wall was probably not right. So let's just measure that. We see that that's 1039, so that's really awkward, isn't it? So we're going to move this rather than changing them, it would be really nice if they were all the same size. So we're going to make that 1910 again. We're going to make sure that that's sitting in the right place. Move that two millimeters across. It's only two millimeters that we're talking about, it's really quite silly. And then we're going to intersect those walls. So that way we've got a consistent door throughout the house, which of course makes um, ordering 
simpler and hopefully even makes it more cost effective. Now the next most important and common door type that we're going to be using is the hinged door. We're going to use the single hinged door. Uh, we don't want it to be have, have an arched head. Now unfortunately the doors in ArchiCAD 21 still aren't that fantastic. They've ArchiCAD or Graphisoft has created a new tool um, which makes doors and windows really um, interchangeable but it's a separate add-on that you need to buy. So the one that they've got as the built-in unfortunately hasn't been upgraded. Now where do we place this door? There's a lot of design and construction implications with this. Maybe if we wanted to um, leave half a concrete block or a full concrete block, we'd need to allow for that. So let's turn off this trace reference so we understand what we're doing. And coming back off the concrete block, we're going to allow, say, 400. And then we're going to move this. Now, this door is currently 900, which is a strange sort of width. Now, if we're talking about concrete blocks, we're really going to have trouble because we're not going to get a door to be a standardized size fitting into a standardized hole because there's just not that much range. So let's extend that to here. Turn back on the trace. What does that do? It has an implication on maybe the placement of my um, door and my placement of the TV cabinet. So let's move this back 200 mil. That's closer to where it was before. Uh, it's still not exactly the same, but like I said, really whenever we're doing something, it's a design exercise as well to make that work. Now, in terms of the door width, we're going to leave that at 900 for now. That's just a standard sort of um, opening size, which allows us to do a, a door leaf at 820, which is a standardized size. Uh, if we want to understand that in more detail, what we do is go into the door settings, then we'd go to the hinge door settings, then we'd go to the nominal sizes and tolerance, and what we see here is that there's a whole lot of different ways we can do dimensions. So again, this is really helpful to help us to start to appreciate what complexities there is actually in a door, as saying that the wall hole dimension is allowing for a um, a 900, whereas the egress dimension is 820 and the leaf dimension is 840. Now the reality is that my door leaf is probably going to be 820 by 2040. So it's not currently right, but that's based on settings of my frame, which I also don't know if they're right, because this is a standard ArchiCAD template. So if I want to make that perfect, I'd need to go into my frame and leaf and make sure that all of these were accurate. Now, what makes them accurate? Well, it depends on what door I'm using, and that depends on which manufacturer I'm getting the door from. It depends on a lot of other tolerances, which I don't have the information of generally when I'm starting a new project. Until I start doing the research to know which door I'm going to be using from what company, is it a Hume door or a Corinthian door, they're the most common ones I'd be using. Uh, what sort of jam am I using? Am I using a Hume jam? Maybe I actually like um, some different jams, I'm trying to remember the name of it at the moment, I've forgotten, uh, which allows me to do a shadow detail. So I might therefore need to spend a bit more time researching that to find out what it is, how it works, how thick it is before I can finalize this. But for now, again, my method is let's not waste too much time. Let's just place the door and then we can start fiddling later to make it more perfectly accurate. Now, should I have a hinge door into a bathroom? Depends if it's going to impact on how the um, the bathroom is used, how far away is the door from the toilet. If someone faints, falls off the toilet, will they block that door and stop it from opening? Possibly. Again, something to think about, something to consider, but I don't want to get too hung up on it at the moment and um, stop me from doing what I'm trying to do. So... The more we learn, the more we realize there is to know about the, um, the complexities of construction and design decisions and how they impact our ability to draw in ArchiCAD. The only problem with that is we might never draw anything in ArchiCAD. So let's just draw something really quick, something simple for now. Um, we've got our interior doors. In the next video, we'll have a look at how to do our exterior doors and or windows because, of course, they could be interchangeable depending on what they're used for.
and how we might um, make a decision about which way to go with those.